I'm tempted to have a second round, but I don't think I will because we want to have questions from the audience. But what I note in all your presentations, um, I don't think North Korea was <laughs> mentioned once. And yet it dominated, in a sense, the, the, the Trump, the first, I hope, personally, the last Trump presidency. Um, uh, who should, Mr. Kim, what is happening with your neighbor to the north? Well, that's uh, uh, quite interestingly, uh, in economist uh, intelligence unit uh, has recently published Risk Outlook 2024. They have listed up top 10 risk elements, but North Korea, whether it's nuclear or missile uh, proliferation or the nuclear issue, was not listed, was not singled out as one of the top 10 risk. So I think that's uh, quite a, a, back in Korea, I think there's, uh, of course, the South Korean people are more or less get, uh, getting used to uh, kind of the perennial threat uh, coming from the North, but I think there's, uh, 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 this uh, North Korean uh, threat or risk is a kind of the given factor for the Korean business and also some of the, uh, the Western and other foreign uh, partner, business partners are, are taking into account that is uh, the kind of the uh, constant uh, kind of factor that would be uh, fitted into their uh, equation for the business. Uh, I think that's, uh, uh, that's one uh, part of the answer for uh, what uh, why this uh, North Korean effect was not uh, sort of listed dangerous up. complacency or uh, and I think that the level of uh, threat or level of uh, threat perception has remained more or less the same of course this uh, they have included that uh, the first use of that uh, nuclear weapons even to be included in that uh, their constitution so that is quite alarming and also this uh, a series of uh, intercontinental bodies of missile tests that is also alarming, but still I think there's uh, people in the uh, boardroom, I mean CEOs are more concerned about intensification of the US-China hegemonic uh, rivalry. It was Doug who brought us back to the CPTPP and sensibly in my opinion said how foolish it was of America to duck out of the TPP. But um, South Korea of course is not in the CPTPP. Uh, we are not in yet uh, and uh, perhaps I think there's a next year the Korean government is uh, trying to uh, make a push for uh, the, uh, their participation into CPTPP. And of course, Britain, which is a long way away from, right, uh, from you're on the, the Indo waiting list region, as well, is right. joining. Yeah. But, but I wonder, I mean, uh, Hoichi, um, I mean, originally when the TPP was envisaged, it was a way of keeping China out. Now, China wants to join the CPTPP. From a Japanese point of view, would China be welcome? Yes, uh, quite interesting question. Of course, I think that within the Japanese government, many officials are examining the possibility as well as the result of Chinese participant. First of all, the hurdle is extremely high. So uh, it is quite unlikely that China can pass the hurdle. This is one thing. The other thing is that if- You mean this would be a way of keeping China out? Well, uh, in addition to the original members, now UK is going to be a member of the GPPPP. So that handle will be higher for China to enter into it. So if China clear all the barriers to enter into the TPP, it means that the China should promote political and economic reforms. These would be welcome to welcome to Japan or other members of the CPTPP. So the both cases, number one, the hardware is still very high. And so it is quite unlikely that China can join in it. Number two, uh, if China can reform politically and economically its own system, it's also very welcoming. But at the same time, we need to stick the original point. We shouldn't be affected by Chinese pressure to lower the hurdle. So yeah. as far as this continues, I think it's okay.